Welcome, folks, to the uh, 16th of August, 2023 Aries Working Group call. Um, good topics on stage today. This is a uh, Hyperledger call, and so the uh, antitrust policy and code of conduct are in effect. Links to those in the meeting notes. Um, you are welcome to add yourself to the attendees list or make any other adjustments useful to the community in the agenda page. Um, link is there, <clears throat> and you'll just need a uh, login to the Hyperledger wiki to do so. Um, the is there anyone new that would like to introduce themselves? Hi, um, I'd like I'd love to go. Um, Please. Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Rohan. I'm calling in from Chicago. Um, I'm currently a student at uh, Harvard Business School, and I'm working um, with um, with a small team on a startup to um, essentially use Hyperledger solutions to build um, identity for business uh, for business solutions to to fight fraud. Um, so we've been going through a lot of the docs, and it's been very, very, very helpful. All the content that um, the team here has put together. So excited to join in, see how I can contribute, and you know, be part of the community going forward. Welcome, and thanks for joining us today. Anyone else? All right. Uh, announcements by Folds Pause for August. Uh, AFJ is, uh, is to, to doing biweekly during the summer. And uh, here is the, the Didcom users group uh, link that we referenced last time. So this is the second, third, and fourth Mondays. Um, it does not meet on the first, or if there is one, a fifth Monday of, of the month. Um, and so that's the schedule that has linked to the to the calls and the other stuff as it relates. Um, yeah. Any other announcements we should have on our list? All right. Does any of our projects want to share some uh, status or work updates? Um, Akapai has a release 0100RC0 0, um, out. Um, we're going to do an RC1 as well, and probably by the end of this week, we'll have a 0 0.10.0 0, uh, version available. So um, one breaking change in it um, that's covered in the change log. Um, there's also a regression fix, which kind of triggered the need for this release. Uh, as well, lots going on in Akapai relating to peer dids, which we'll talk about today, and then also related to um, the use of the new and on-creds RS library. What's going on there? Nice. Any other updates? All right. On our agenda today, we have uh, first a quick marketing update uh, from Alex. Um, and then here's a, I have my name here. It's only partially me. Um, uh, Stephen has a presentation uh, about the did peer uh, th three um, combined with the um, the unqualified transition update. We should, I should retitle this something more intelligent. Um, that's here, uh, and so uh, that's our, our main topic for today and all of the things that surround that. Um, are there any, uh, any adjustments to the agenda that we wanna, to, we wanna make before we get going? All right, uh, Alex, you, you requested a minute. <laughs> Less than a minute. Uh, good, mo good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Nothing specific this week to update you on Aries marketing. To summarize what is already in place, you can see the new changes live on the Aries page. They went live last week on the Hyperledger site. Um, you're welcome to join our marketing working group meeting every last Tuesday of the month. Next one is a week on Tuesday. Um, there's a draft wiki page in progress there. And of note, given the new introduction this morning, there's two links in there with getting started resources for Aries that have been collated from the community. And just a reminder on this quarter that Hyperledger is looking out for anything identity related to promote, such as blog pieces and resources from the community. So please reach out to them if you've got something you wish to have them help you amplify. 
Yeah, on that with on that wiki, if you go back to that wiki page a second there, Sam. This one. Yeah, and scroll down. Right there, please find a helpful list of links. Those two links there um, have a number of resources that the community gave as part of a recent survey out to them. So um, feel free to tap into those. Ah, fantastic. That's that's good work. Appreciate that, Alex. Um, cool. All right. Uh, thank you, Alex. Any other marketing questions, topics? All right, Stephen, we're on to the topic here, and I will pass this over to you. Great. Right. Sounds good. Where did you go? There it is. Zoom leaves full screen mode. All right. You can see my screen, yes? Yes. Oh, no, you, oh you can? Wow, there we go. That's better now. I can see it. This is good. Okay, um, we've been working on this on Akapai and and dealing with did peer two and three and and sort of figuring it out. So um, we thought uh, we try to take some learnings that we've sort of figured out and what exactly we're doing, and um, and raise a couple of issues to the community to see if we can get some consensus on it. Um, I actually created this a few weeks ago and we um when we thought we'd have time on the call to talk about this but we ran over on other topics so um, i've evolved a presentation so the title is kind of weird um, for what i'm going to talk about but anyway um, we do have a community coordinated update pull request 793 is there i think it needs some revision still um to work on it so um we'll get there but but a reminder about a community community coordinated update process is basically we agree an update is needed um and and basically it's a a transition that the community wants to do from some old mechanism to some new mechanism where we can't detect automatically that we need to do the transition that someone's got to make a call and start sending out the new one um, and just assume that the other party will be able to receive it. And, and so the way we do that is a community coordinated update. Um, three steps. Basically, we agree that by a certain date, deployments will support receiving both formats, but sending the old one. Um, on a future date soon after that, um, deployments will switch. Uh, we'll assume that everyone has completed step one and therefore, um, everyone can can start switching to sending out the new format on the assumption that everyone is set up to receive old and new and then after a certain date we eliminate the old format the tricky part here is um, the use of the term deployments it, it isn't enough just to have it in the various you know akapai and afj and and so on you actually have to get deployments using those out there doing it that want to interoperate. And so that's the, the trick in, in pushing a community coordinated update. Okay, um, transitioning from unqualified DIDs. Um, so in this case, the old format is an unqualified DID and their associated DID docs. And the new format is DID peer two and DID peer three. Um, so, um, just again, for anyone that doesn't know, um, when we establish a peer-to-peer -peer DIDCOM connection, um, the common approach has been for both sides to create a, a, a peer DID, a, a, a DID that is um, a peer intended not to be published onto any public ledger, not any um, uh, ledger to be um resolved by anybody, but actually just transmitted to the other party along with a did doc. So you give a did and a did doc to the other party, the other party um, does the same and to you, and now you both have a did and a did doc to communicate with one another and all didcom communication uses that. So in this case, um, we're transitioning from unqualified dids, which are just, um, 
don't have any did prefix because this was done before the did spec existed. And the new format is did peer two and did peer three. Um, again, I'm assuming people know what did peer two and three is, but if not, did peer two um, is a format where the elements of the did doc are encoded as the identifier of the peer itself. So there's a two dot and then an identifier, and that identifier encodes essentially that the entire did doc in it. And then did peer three is essentially did peer three dot um, identifier, and that identifier is a hash of the identifier part of the did peer two. So basically allows us to send to reference the same did peer two, but without having to have the entire long string involved. So the unqualified transition is in did exchange. Um, so we're talking the did exchange protocol. We always send um, during the transition. So step one in um, did exchange, we always send the request message, which um, is the first message of did exchange. We always send that at, with an unqualified did. Um, but we support receiving a request as either an unqualified or a did peer two. Um, if we receive a did peer two in a request, um, we send, uh, we, we recognize that we send a did peer two in the response message. So, you know, it, it, it allows us to get ready for this transition. Um, once the transition starts, which is step two, where people start sending out did peer twos, um, the way that is done in a deployment is we add a flag such as, you know, Akapai might have a send did peer two, three to activate the start of step two. And basically what that flag does is it says when, when I'm on the, when I'm sending the request message of did exchange, I'm going to send the message using a did peer two. So that's the transition that we're seeing. This is what we're implementing in Akapai and in other libraries, I hope. Um, the question I've got is, should we enable this behavior on 0016 connections? So this is the first question that comes up. Um, is anyone, are, are we thinking we're gonna do this for the connections protocol as well, or only did exchange? Anyone have a view, comment, opinion on that? Highlighting that this would be important for anyone who does not yet support the did exchange protocol and needs to be involved in this transition. Now, in theory, we transitioned to did exchange or we tried to, but it's the same. It is exactly the same sort of issue that a, that of a transition needed. Okay, so no particular view on that. Um, okay. This might be a good opportunity to um, eliminate the, the standard connection protocol and force everyone over to the uh, new protocol. Yeah. In other words, combine the efforts. Yeah. OK. Um, so then we got, so as we started working through this in Akapai and sort of figuring out what was needed, one of the things we wondered about is where are DIDs used in Aries and in DIDCOM v1? And it turns out DIDs are actually only ever used internally after the connection is made. They aren't ever used externally. And what I mean by that is during connection establishment, the connections store the did identifiers, their did and my did. So they store them in a in a record that is used internally. And the did docs are stored in a collection of dids. So there's a, a collection, I'm not sure exactly the data format. So I use that term collection usually, but um, basically um, a collection of dids and did docs that are searchable that are indexed essentially by keys, by the the the, the ver key, the ver um, 
the um, verification key of the DID and did doc. Um, so now I've got, I've created a connection record. I've stored their DID and my DID in it. I've created a DID doc um, that is searchable by DID, retrieve, returns a DID doc, but is also searchable by the, the verification key within the DID doc. And it turns out when a message is received from another party, so um, the other party uses the connection, the message actually contains the key. It doesn't contain the did anywhere. It contains the verification key. The key is used to look up the did. The did in turn is used to look up the connection. So I get the key out of the message. I do a search for the, um, uh, in the in the did doc, and then um, find my did based on that did. So that is how I actually use um, figure out what connection is involved. So that's kind of interesting that the did is not used. Correspondingly, to send a message, I start with a connection ID um, that I want to send it to. I find the connection. I use their did to get the did. And I resolve their did to get the did doc, the service endpoint, and the keys needed. And, and again, when I send the message, all I send is the verification key. I don't actually send the did itself. So the net of that is dids are only used internally, and keys are actually used for interop in didcom v1. Um, so the net of that is we really don't have to do anything other than that transition that we talked about in the previous um, from old to new in establishing a connection um, in DIDCOM 1. Now, DIDCOM v2, I believe, um, DIDs are used more, um, and, and those are used in messages, and therefore there is visibility into what did people use and dids are actually sent back and forth. But this idea um, of in didcom one that, you know, for instance, we're saving space and things like that in messages and so on is actually not, um, not reality, it turns out, um, because the only thing that's transmitted related to the did is the key. Any comments by anyone on that? Is that clear? Um, that was certainly not well understood. I didn't understand it clearly until recently so uh I'll, I'll offer that in my head i was uh kind of considering the issues of did v1 and did v2 simultaneously yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and and yeah. so and so that's that's one of the reasons there um yeah. but you're right practically speaking uh because did peer three can only be used after did peer uh did peer two is passed and the did peer two is actually passed during the during the initial connections protocol then there isn't an immediate practical effect of didcom v3 uh, or didcom or did peer three support i gotta say the right words uh, yeah. there's not a practical effect of did peer three in didcom v1 because of the the lack of usage after establishing correct okay um so so i don't that generates a question and maybe i'm skipping ahead in your presentation do we simplify the transition by not yet including uh, did peer three? No, and, I, I don't think that's the right answer. So you're arguing that we keep it in there in preparation for efficient use in did combi two? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't disagree with that. I was just kind of wondering where yeah, it was going to be. Yeah. Um, that gets us to our next question, which we debated, and we think we have an answer for, but wanted to talk to people people what did to did to use when we get to did peer three and here we get into this weirdness of of this idea of using did peer two and three um obviously in v1 it doesn't matter it might matter did com v2 and again sam our dids are sent back and forth in messages in did in v2 they, they are the, the the primary identifiers for messages change from keys to dids yeah okay so um the suggestion is that we receive a did peer two, we immediately on our side generate a did peer three identifier um, 
we resolve the did peer two string to be an actual did doc. So we inflate the did doc from the um, encoding that's in did peer uh, two. We store that index by did peer three, and then we put the did peer three in their did connection. So this is what we're planning on doing in Akapai right now. Um, what question that raises, basically what that means is that after the did peer two is sent, we never, we never talk about it again. We just ignore it. Um, we we transition immediately to using did peer three, and everything tied to it is is did peer three. Now, if we ever did receive a did peer two, we could have exception handling and and things to find the proper did peer three. But but the idea is that did peer two is is used in establishing the connection. But once established, we ignore it after that and we simply use did peer three going forward so that's what we're planning on implementing right now barring um a change from the community or anything like that guidance on that but what gets interesting is what id should be put in the did doc um recall um, i should have had a link in here to the did peer spec basically the did peer spec says to get from a did peer to string into an actual did doc you basically do a text transformation and stick in values. Um, but one of the things you have is the ID of the did doc and in it, it says, oh, it should be a did peer two. But if we're gonna index it by the did peer three, what we'd like to do is, is make it the did peer three. Um, and, and again, I emphasize this, we, we shifted everything into being a did peer three and we never talk of the did peer two again. Um, the did peer, spec doesn't talk about that so i think we need to evolve the did peer spec um but there's other options we can do if we open up that can of worms so any comments right there on on this particular issue does anyone care do we need to worry about it so, so steven just to clarify the the in this case the did doc is only really ever used internally correct Exactly. Yes. So to that extent, it probably doesn't matter like from a, exactly. a spec or standards point of view, because it's not something that you're sending somewhere else. It's something that you're only using internally. Exactly. Yes, that is true. So here's what I'm talking about. Sorry, I jumped to that, but here's the ID string here. And it's this big long string that's in there. Um, you are only using it internally, so that's that's why we weren't overly concerned about it. But but made our decision that we would um, whoops, um, basically replace this with the did peer three, um, all of these strings with the did peer three version from then on when we store it. But not the end of the world. But it just it would be a slight update to this part of this and it would um, so extend out this to do that. So Stephen, in my head, three was always a synonym to two, two being the basic format that would continue to exist. Now yeah, I'm evaluating what whether what's in my head is dumb exactly. or, 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 <laughs> yeah. or not. That is exactly where my mind went. For a long time, that's what I just assumed. And then I started thinking about this and we started getting into, okay, how do we code this? And and Jason Syrotop, who's doing the coding on our site, started asking these questions. And that's where my, my thinking started to shift. So um, I have a handful of, uh, one more thing, Daniel, and then I'll, and then I'll be quiet. Um, I, uh, I am imagining some future uses of of did docs, or some some things that that could happen that don't yet, but but uh, I've had in my head as could happen in the future, and one of them is that uh, if you are if you have a, a relationship where you shared periods between two parties and you add a third party, um, then you would need to share dids anew with that party so that they can be aware of sort of the the dids used in the in that in, you know in that relationship. And in that case, if the if the the, the did uh, peer two did kind of vanishes and becomes not a thing anymore, 
then that makes it a lot more difficult to share with a new participant in the relationship um, because you can't just pass them a, a did peer three. Um, you may potentially be able to do so with a did document, but uh, but I but I, I I do know that if we did leave two as the dominant one, that being able to share additionally did peer two um, as a way of doing that would be a. Uh, I'm sure that would work in the sense that you'd be able to add someone to that to that piece of the relationship. Yeah. There's the, the other thought that I had, and this is even further out. I've been thinking about some offline potential things and i think there are some uh some potential cases this is pretty far out so i'm not sure how like much we need to worry about this yet but there are some potential cases of um where we might want to pass did documents for other parties that we know in an offline sense um so uh and maybe that's a peer did maybe it isn't a peer did, did document but the ability to say hey we're all kind of in an offline state here i want to do an offline introduction between you and this other party and because i can't just pass you their did because you can't resolve it i'm actually going to pass you my cached copy of their did document mm -hmm. um and and that has a case too uh that it that, that, that impacts this to some degree anyway that, that's the that's the thoughts in my head um, but I could just Dan do, a, do a quick answer on the first part. It is super easy to go from a did peer three to a did peer two deterministically. So in that third party introduction, you could still use a did peer for the two for the introduction, but the the did peer three would be the same. That's true so long as you have the 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 resolved, I'm air quoting resolved did document of did peer two. Yeah, yeah. So if you designed your system instead to basically keep a copy of the did and in your in your resolved copy of the did document was simply cached, then uh, because you resolved it from somewhere else, right? The the theory is that you can always re-resolve a did document, which is true up until we go to did peer three, and then you can't actually resolve a did peer three to a did document if you don't have a cached copy anymore. So, so our question is, we are storing the did doc. But now it's special behavior for this did method. No, no. It's not really special behavior. You receive a did too, and then you store it. Anyway. I um, mean, the, the theory though is that every other did can be re-resolved. And and the 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 behavior that uh, that that if you go to did peer three, you cannot re-resolve it if you don't already have the the backing did document for it. Whereas you can re-resolve, and I realize that resolve is a weird word to use here because you're translating it from a did peer two into a did document. But my point is, is that you can't do that again if if did peer three becomes the, the primary identifier that you use in the relationship. Okay. So those are my thoughts. Uh, Daniel, you had your hand up, and now it isn't anymore. Yeah, I'm wondering if I should just hold my thoughts because I, I think Stephen's probably going to touch on some of what I'm thinking in coming up sites. So like this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so a couple of proposals. So the, the, the end of this, if we open up changing the peer specification, um, what should we change the spec to say? And the proposals that we've come out of are, are sort of three styles. One is to set the ID to did peer three identifier and be done with it. Um, so what I proposed in the previous, which is, as I say, just, um, here's the dot right here, Daniel. Anyway, um, it is on two, but not on three, not on three. I thought we fixed that. Oh. We did. We fixed it on three, but not on two. We didn't change two because two has been around for a minute. Oh, I thought we fixed the three. By adding it. Okay. Anyway. No, we so, fixed three by removing it. Um, the 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 thing about uh, the the reason it was added, and this is probably my fault, is I was trying to make it as consistent as possible, so the, so the processing of the elements of did peer two were pretty systematic. But that's not a concern for did peer three or any of the other did peer uh, algorithms. Okay. Um, okay. So one idea is we simply replace this identifier in the resolved did doc to be did peer three. And we go with that. So what we talked about already. Another is to use the also known as in the dead 
in the DID doc that includes both the DID peer two and three. Um, presumably we put the peer three in the ID, but, but the also known as would be there um, to include both the two and the three. Um, if we have to open up the did spear spec, how about we change the definition of did peer? And so I came up with sort of two ideas. Um, the first one was, and, and these are equivalent. Um, I think the second one probably makes more sense because it, this is copied actually from the side tree spec, which is basically the side tree has two forms of URIs of, of, of identifiers, a short form, which is, would be just this, which is did peer um, did peer three with a did peer three identifier, but a side tree also has a long form, and the long form in in this case would have the did peer two identifier added as a colon after it. So the, so in other words, we deprecate did peer two entirely. We get rid of it, and we redefine did peer three as being one of these two forms, and most likely being this one. So, so use the same style as, as, as Cytra uses. Does that make sense? What do you so, think of it? So the initial identifier is larger because you're sort of re including the peer three yes. hash along, you know, in front of the, of the peer two, but it, then it follows a more standard pattern for its exactly. short form yeah. of, of doing so. Hmm. And then, yeah. And and basically, side tree uses this to get around, um, to basically get around having to wait until Bitcoin resolves before the the did can be used. Basically, they pass a long form version of it that essentially contains the did doc element so that you can use the thing. Um, but also reserve this short form version for ongoing use. So back to the previous question, I think Stephen, before diving into this one, which was, you know, what to store in the did doc. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that if we're gonna have both things in there and that kind of makes some sense to me that I think saving the original form of the did doc so the id would be the did peer two and then the also known as would be the did peer three um i think that would be a, a like a a truer representation of what was originally provided with just a single addition to it and would you know be the most compatible if we needed to you know as uh had been suggested need to be sent somewhere else Okay. Um, to extend. So I think that would be like, that's, that feels right to me. I'm not sure that I have a really good justification for it, but. This is also uh, not, <laughs> this is not digital. This is not right or wrong. Yeah. So that would be. So the ID would be here too, and the uh, also known as uh, the did peer three. Right, because then a receiver of that document, if you were to share it, as had been indicated, they could rederive the did peer three if they wanted and not even look for the existence of that additional field. Um, or they could, you know, use it if it's if it's there, and it would work either way. And for yeah. your internal purposes, you'd have a field that you could rely on being there because you're generating and it's storing it that way and be able to look it up that way in an inefficient fashion. So that feels okay to me. That, that feels good to me, Warren. I think that's wise. Okay. I'll, I'll add some ad additional thoughts. Um, uh, just to add some clarity, I think, to uh, my proposal of this also known as and into the did doc. Um, so I think did resolvers, when resolving a did, 
should strictly resolve a did for a a or resolve a document for a specific did. Like we shouldn't resolve a did peer two and then see it did peer three within the ID, uh, which was why I was pushing on the also known as. Um, and then in a in a similar vein, I think when we air quote resolve a did peer three, I think that should resolve a did peer three document, not something that is a did peer two, but we call it a did peer three. And so I, I think the document that we resolve from a did peer three, I think it should be generated from the did peer two and its resulting did document, but it's technically a separate value from the did peer two that just happens to correspond to an, a, a did peer two that we perceive. Um, and so when we resolve a did peer two, it includes the also known as, which specifies the did peer three that it relates to. And then we generate the did peer three document from that and then can store it. And then like in the reverse direction as well, when we resolve a did peer three, we can specify an also known as that maps it back to the original did peer two that generated it. Um, and looking at the did core specification, that bidirectional mapping that it is provided in the also known as field um, uh, represents a, a strong mapping between those two dids as referring to the same did subject, which I think is semantically uh, quote unquote correct in terms of what is currently defined in the did core spec, I would say personally. That's what it's been my feelings on it at least. Okay. So, so to to paraphrase what you said, basically, th this is actually what we agreed to do yesterday. You're right, it's extending this out. Um, in when we receive a did peer two, we will generate the identifier. We will generate the did peer three doc, and the did peer three doc will be the did peer two doc with the ID switched. And it also known as set to did peer two. And we'll store that. And then whenever did peer three is received, we will always resolve to that did doc. When we resolve the did peer two, we'll return, um, we'll simply look at the string. We won't look in any caching or anything else. We'll just look in the string and we'll um, do the transformation. And but but we'll include the also known as. Okay, so I think I got that what you said. So I think this is a more accurate description of what we're planning on doing right now. What what Jason's been chat tasked with doing. Um, the only thing left is there any sort of appetite for switching to this long and short version, long URI, short URI version of these things. And that eliminates I, any reference to peer to two at all. I think the short form, long form thing is such a better plan. It's such a cleaner idea to include the short form in the definition of the long form and then have sort of a, a one, you know, one, uh, you know, one thing that does them both. Uh, the the downside of that is it's like yet another thing that we're doing kind yes. of I mean but but on the but on the plus side um, it, it's it's just, it's just such a cleaner thing and it's not like the transformations we're talking about are wholesale different we have to throw everything out we just yeah. get to refactor it a little into into doing the the newer thing yeah I really so would would there need to be some kind of uh, mechanism in the protocol such that if you received a short form of the did peer three and you no longer had some cached copy of the did doc that you would be able to respond in a way that it could then send you the long form such that instead of sending you a did peer two for instance nope and that way you would be able to get it back you're, you're unable, uh -oh. and, and that's the kind of the nature of of did peer entirely 
is that like if you you can you can only actually resolve it if you already well what I said is not entirely true but but generally speaking you can only resolve a did if you were actually provided the did the did peer two is a little interesting because it encodes the whole thing into the into the into the the, the identifier itself did peer one though now deprecated is is another uh, is another one of these issues where like if you have a sort of a later form of the uh, of the did or the did's been updated there's, in, in, there's not really a, a great way to do that the the problem is is that the did is the bootstrap by which you communicate with the other party right so so if you if you don't if you cannot resolve it for some reason you're kind of done like yeah. the, you can't really continue or pick up you you basically have to rebuild the conversation from scratch now it could be rebuilt using the same did and you could be like oh yeah this is the this is the person i knew before and now i now i have the long form of this um but uh, but that that is one of the differences say between the uh, the side tree one where they pass the short and the long form is that the short form is actually resolvable later because by that time theoretically it's it's resolvable on the ledger as opposed to the um, to to peer dids, which cannot be resolvable later in that particular case. So, two things on that. Yeah, um, one is yeah, if you can't resolve who who you're connected with, you have no key to send a a didcom message to them. So there's no way to send them a message. So it's got to go out of band. Um, Sam, actually, you're. You, you, the way side tree works, you can actually, you can't actually, res, you can't necessarily resolve it um, because they actually use it in a, in their peer did form um, where they never intend to publish the, sh the, the short form. So you would actually possibly be in the same, in the same situation. Oh, so the actual inclusion of it in side tree is optional. Like yeah. actually in a in a Merkle tree. Uh, yeah, they actually have the phrase um an arbitrary time where the short, the only valid version is the long form, potentially forever. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was interesting to to read that. So they're basically doing peer dids without calling them peer dids. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I, I might I must be understanding something, misunderstanding something, because you said that if I didn't have the key, I couldn't send the the message. Um, am I not using the private key to send the message, which is not in the did doc? Um, like those are two separate things, are they not? You're sending the public key to encrypt the message to the private key of the other side. So, so you're sending a message, you use your back. private key and their public key. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Gotcha. So it strikes me that this this long form, short form, did peer three idea doesn't necessarily resolve the question of what goes in the ID field for the resolved document. Oh, really? Like we we would still have to answer which one do we put the long form or the short form into the document that we resolve? Um, the way the side tree does it, I believe, I'm 99% sure the, they only put the short form in. Okay, interesting. So the the long form, this is, this is you know, I had, I had proposed basically a, a did URL, but in looking at how side tree did it, I just, well, I knew side tree did something. So I looked up what they did and this is what they do. And they basically are saying the did is actually this. Um, but there's this alternate long form that has this extra colon on it. But the, this is the actual identifier. So what I just said a minute ago about having strong opinions about a, a did resolving to a did document that the ID is the exact match to the did that was resolved doesn't hold true in the side tree case then pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> that's arguable yeah okay I, I like the idea that the, there's a real did and then there's the short form and the short form goes in the also known as yeah and and what that means is that when we're developing software yeah. we store that we store the long form did the real did air quote real did and then we we keep a subsequent index or or some other way of indexing the also known as 
so that when uh, so that when that did is used, we can we can uh, relate it back to the to the to the air quote real did. So, but this applies in several different ways here. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so I have thoughts, but I'm super curious about what you have on your remaining remaining slides, Stephen. I don't know if I have anything. This is that's the most interesting one. Um, so the question, the next question is, do we upgrade unqualified bids at all? Um, so because in a DIDCOM B1 world, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Did usage is all internal. There's actually no reason to upgrade un existing unqualified bids. Um, because all of the searching is based on keys, it, it just doesn't matter. Um, the question is, um, and, and then the next thing, and, and I credit Daniel for this thought that, you know, we don't even know how we're going to update existing connections from DIDCOM 1 to V2, I don't think. I don't know what the plan is there. So do we just punt on this problem of upgrading unqualified bids or should we take on this um, migration of unqualified bids to make them into fit into the did peer world so the way that manifests itself is do we provide so in akapai we have these upgrade um scripts basically and on a given release, we may add a script that says, oh, um, when upgrading from this version um, or upgrading from a previous version to this version, execute this script. And so the script could go through and update all of the connections and update all of the dids that are unqualified to make them qualified. So we're upgrading our our our. Um, um, our, our set of, of dids to be, yeah, to be transformed into a did peer three, for example, and then all of our, my did and their did references and connections to be did peer threes. Should we go ahead and do that? Or should we wait till we figure out how a, how an existing did v one connection might become a did, did v two. This is where Sam jumps in because he knows more about Tom V2 than anyone else. <laughs> yeah. So um, I will confess that I have not worked out a foolproof plan. And okay. it's not that I've run into roadblocks. It's just that I haven't yet spent time there um, working out how we actually do that transition. Um, yeah. my, uh, my guess is that via some interrupt, interrupt profile, internal or external or something, we as a community kind of say like, okay, like we're ready to actually talk DidCon V2 now. Yeah. Um, and then um, we either have a way ideally of self discovering that so that uh, so that we don't have to do a community or coordinated update, or we uh, or we or, or we do a community coordinated update and, and then we have a target date to do so under the idea that we can fully deprecate DidCon V1. Um, yeah. And so under that condition and, and with, with, with peer dids, et cetera, I think we're good to like move forward. Yeah. Um, and I would like to have a good answer to this coming, you know, as, as we go. Um, there's two reasons for that. One is that I think that this issue is a huge sticking point for people that arrive at the Aries community uh, thinking that, you know, as advertised, we're doing stuff with dids and didcom yet we're not actually, you know, because of the, and I don't, if I throw any stones, some of them are going to hit me, right? Um, in the sense that um, a lot of the stuff we figured out and got going a long time ago, and we've made a heck of a lot of progress since then, this just isn't something that we've like brought up and made current with a, with a, the rest of our current practices. And so I think that having this answered uh, so that as a community, it's just done and gone, um, I think is a better idea. Similarly, a long years and years ago, we uh, additionally had a different idea for how to reference protocol uh, names, and we transitioned away from that, and that's gone. And that was similarly like a weird thing that we did that didn't make that much sense, um, and we fixed. And this it falls into the same category for me. The good news is, 
is that I think the actual processing is simply uh, restricted, meaning the update that we're going to run is simply in what we pass in the did exchange protocol and everything else is actually handled internally. So we are encouraging our community to do the internal stuff now so that when we do that didcom transition, the didcom v2 transition, it's a solved issue. Um, but but realistically <laughs> speaking, you know, you could get by doing just the most minor amount of work to 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 demonstrate compatibility now, and then that would eliminate the fact that we're not you know using dids regardless of how you handle it internal to your software. And then the uh, you know when didcom v2 shows up, that's when the rest of this would apply. So I, I do think that we should do this, um, and I think that there's value there. Despite the fact that we have not actually demonstrated how to make how to make this transition happen, I'm uh, anticipating that the software we have is going to be written such that you could the same endpoint will receive a didcom v1 message and a didcom v2 message, which means that the only thing required to really upgrade that connection is to have the confidence that the party on the other side is capable of receiving the message you're sending, which involves processing the envelope and being able to deal with the fact that it, it's, it's did oriented instead of key oriented. Mm -hmm. And so this solves the did oriented versus key oriented problem by pre-coordinating a solution to the, to the, to the unqualified peer dids. And then I, I believe that when we get to the fact that we're all gonna transition over to didcom v2, or at least add support for didcom v2, then that's the issue. That's what we, that's what we figure out. Um, one of the example, one of the ideas, for example, that we could use in order to not do a community coordinated update is to, um, is in, at least at the, in, in the initial phases, is to run a feature, uh, a discover features uh, request and be able to indicate that you support didcom v2 and then the future messages then could be sent between, you know, between those two parties in didcom v2 format. Mm -hmm. um, that would be one of the ways of making that happen. And so I actually think that that, uh, that coordination is gonna require a little bit of, um, um, and we already have provision uh, with the sort of accepted types stuff. We already have provision in, in did exchange and or out of band messages specifically to indicate which types of things that you support. So I actually think that even from the very beginning that will be a, a fairly natural transition that we move to. Um, and that we won't have to do a proper community coordinated update for that. Well, obviously, I think we should sort of encourage the community in their adoption of it so that we can deprecate didcom v1. But yeah, sorry, that was really wordy. But but I do think we should do this. And I'm not terrifically concerned that the transition between v1 and v2 is an unsolvable problem. I, I, or, or that it's not worth solving. I think it will be worth solving. And I think it will be solvable. No. Um, so I'm going to, since we're right out of time, I'm going to sort of say what I think we're going to do. Um, I, I think we're going to continue with this, and, and we, I mean, Akapai. So we're going to do specific things. Um, I think we go, nothing today that we've talked about suggests to me that we should change off this plan. So basically we're adding support in Akapai for also known as, so that when we, you know, when we index a did, we have to take into account also known as. So I don't think there's anything in, in Akapai that does anything with also known as before, but I think we need to do it. Um, add that. Um, I think the also known as is the answer here. And we'll go with this as the answer. And in the, and put, put a, P, a PR into the peer did spec to simply add this as um, as the approach. I don't think we'll go down this, unless, unless somebody really thinks this is a good idea, I don't think we'll go down this path. Um, I don't pr propose on, on pushing it any further, um, but instead uh, that I think we go with stronger support for also known as. Uh, I need to think about it. Um, I yeah. actually, I really like the idea. I just have to decide if it's worth the effort given what we already have. Exactly. So I I'm, wish I'm, I, I wish I had had this thought far earlier. Yeah. Um, than, <laughs> than, I wish that this had been built into peer to two, like did peer two at the time, right? That would have been ideal. So, so um, one conversation that I would love to have, Stephen, sorry to just add just a, a, a second in here, 
did methods don't have versions. I know. And we've done a lot with the did peer method. And now there's deprecated things and, it, and, and it's a little bit nuanced and complicated to say whether you support it or not. I would love to have a discussion at some point and maybe given that the most of the interest in did peer two, I think is within the areas community that this isn't an yeah. horribly inappropriate place to have that conversation. Yeah. But I would love to have a conversation about what we do about that and maybe explore some of the options to see what people think. Yeah, yeah. totally agree. Um, for now, we're going to punt on upgrading. Um, but totally open to that one as a follow on. We don't we feel we don't need to do it right now. So we're going to we're going to hold off right now. Um, yeah, so I'm less concerned about the legacy did transformation and, and stuff like that, because um, we're probably not going to worry about it. Um, And then I'm just wondering about about where we are with the other uh, other libraries. I actually didn't update these two slides after. Um, I kind of left them as is from my previous couple of weeks ago. But hopefully that summarizes. Um, we're at time, so I better stop. But that's what we're going to do is is sort of stick to this plan, um, but raise up this concept of also known as to be a a real thing. Um, we think that uh, as I as I say that now, I think that can help with other di did methods, because uh, I think we're going to get also known as in other did methods um, in the near future. So um, with that, I'll stop sharing. Um, and that takes us to time. Stephen, this is a super good conversation, and I feel like there's lots more conversations we need to have uh, related to this. Um, so I, I really appreciate you putting that together and sharing that. Um, we are out of time. Um, we, uh, if you have thoughts about this, um, uh, I, I think that sharing them in the in the community channel would be a good idea. I'll try to do the same, and that way we can sort of advance our thinking oh. before the next me uh, meeting. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, I hope your week is a great one, and uh, thank you for attending and, and contributing your thoughts. And we will see you next time. Take care. Thanks. See ya. Good.